Dear friends, in today's liturgy, we get inspiration from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 26 to 37. As we enter the last week of the liturgical year, our attention is drawn on the final coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In today's gospel, Jesus gives us the example of Noah and Lot. In both the examples, people were eating, drinking, marrying, buying and selling, planting and building up until the very day when the floods came to destroy the earth at the time of Noah and the fire rained down and destroyed at the time of Lot. Both Noah and Lot were saved, but many others at that time met with unexpected and sudden death and severe destruction. So Jesus says that the day of the coming of the Son of Man, the Messiah, on the judgment day, will be similar to the time of Lot and Noah. If the Lord comes today here now, am I ready? Are you ready? At an unexpected time, at a time we do not expect Jesus as the Messiah will come on back on earth to judge us by how much we have loved and lived well, a good example, a life of goodness to our brothers and sisters, and we'll be judged by our good acts. So continue being good and keep away from everything that is negative and bad, because at the end of our time Jesus will judge us by how much we have loved and if we have loved and lived well there is nothing to fear even if the Lord comes right now so the message of Jesus is clear be ready here now at all times be ready and when we live a good life there's nothing to fear our conscience is clear because we are living a good life and we are helping others to live a good life we do not keep grudges and negativity in us we only speak good words we do good actions and we allow the grace of god and the blessings to flow through us to reach others every day as i wake up i try to be good and to do good to all the people that come even those who jump on me when we do that and we do good there's, there's nothing bad to fear but though we are familiar with the, this teaching of Christ which is spoken many times in the gospel many people do not pay heed they do not listen and put in practice this message of being aware being awake being prepared by doing good and being good and that's why we are caught unaware it is easy for us to believe that we will always have time to change. There will be time to change. So we give in to temptation today because there will be time to change. It's very easy to believe like that. And tomorrow comes again and the temptation is again embraced with the thinking that yes, tomorrow will be there. Another tomorrow will be there. And tomorrow will change. Tomorrow will change. Yes, we can always go about perpetuating, perpetuating our sins and embracing the temptation with a constant good intention that after all, tomorrow I will change, tomorrow I will confess, tomorrow I will make peace. That is the mistaken idea we have. We think tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow I will do. So we continually continue sinning, hoping that tomorrow I will change. This is a mistake that we usually make for two reasons. The first reason is that, yes, it is understood that there is always a possibility that our Lord will come today. And today will truly be the end of the world if the Lord comes today. There is that possibility that the Lord will come today and today will truly be the end of the world. There is that possibility. 
or there is always the possibility that our life will have an unexpected end today itself that is to say that there is a possibility that our life will have an unexpected ending maybe today itself if that happens dear friends that the lord comes today or our life comes to the end unexpectedly today will you and me be ready to stand at the judgment seat so that god can receive us by our good works are we ready are we reconciled have you and me made peace with each other especially with god with each other and with ourselves is my heart at peace am i at peace with everyone or oh, i am at war with everyone with god and with myself if I have made peace, I've, had, I've reconciled, I've confessed, I've made peace, and I try every day, every second, with my conscience clear to be at peace, to do good, to be peaceful, to embrace all, to love each other as brothers and sisters, then there's nothing to worry about. Then I am ready, even if the Lord comes today. But if I have been always fighting others, always catching grudges, making war, then full of negatives in me, it means that I am not ready and I have to reconcile here and now today, make confession here and now as soon as possible before it is too late for me. At least most people will not be fully ready today. Maybe you will be ready, thank God. But some people, maybe they will not be ready. And this is the motivation, dear friends, to work out our salvation today, to love here and now, to forgive here and now, to live fully, to be at peace with God, with the others and with ourselves here and now, as a motivation to be ready, to be received by the Lord anytime he calls on us. We should also see this prophecy of the Lord inviting us to live every single moment with him because Jesus, our Lord, comes to us every day of our lives, inviting us to love as he loves, to speak well as he speaks well, to encourage, to do good to all here and now. So the Lord comes every day and invites us to embrace his good news and to be good news here and now, today, every moment. Moment. Yes, Jesus is coming suddenly every day here and now and he's inviting us every day suddenly without him making noise. He's inviting us every day coming to us, inviting us to serve him, to love him with grace, with love, with goodness in our brothers and sisters. Do we listen to his coming to us every day and put his good words into action so that we become good people for all the people that we meet in our family? in our communities, everywhere as we walk, in our going out of home and coming back in home. The gospel continues to encourage us see, that whoever loses his life spending your life for the sake of others and for the sake of the gospel for our Lord will find it. But whoever keeps his life or preserves his life just selfishly only think about himself or herself we lose it with the life that you have received that we have all received how would we use every day do we use it to do good to be good to see that every second i'm using it to build others up and to uplift someone and to do good to someone if we do that, and sometimes it may go out of our comfort zones, but we are helping others, then we will find it. We'll be storing it in the, in the bank of the Lord, so that at the end of the time, the Lord will say, yes, whatever you did, the list of my brothers, you did it for me, and now come and share in the master's joy. In sharing our lives to others, they, it may be fatigue, it may cost us time, it may cost us our comfort, our comfort, it may cost us pain sometimes, but yet our pains will be 
paid our time that we think we have lost but we are spending it with others especially those who need our help will be repaid so spend time with the needy give to the needy give your energy your strength to the needy and we will find that time back that energy back never keep everything to ourselves yes of course it's true and good that we take care of ourselves yes but let us spend our life the way the lord gave all his life for us so that we can live and live and enjoy our life with him and with each other we enjoy our life not alone but with the lord doing his will doing good and that's what we are invited to be that if we are blessed with a life and the strength and the energy with the gifts we have, with the talents we have, with the body that we have, and the energy and the strength and the heart, we have to use it well to build others up. The way the Lord uses his life to build us and to heal us. We too are invited to build others and to heal others too. If we choose the heavenly realities of goodness, of peace, of love, and living those heavenly realities here on earth, then, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, we will eventually and finally also experience the graces and blessings of salvation already here and now. When we love, we already experience the salvation and the healing here and now. When you are peaceful, we already experience the salvation and healing here and now. When we are good, we experience already salvation and peace here and now. And that is the same salvation we will experience at the end of time. So be loving, caring, be peaceful here and now and you will enjoy salvation here and now and at the end of our time on earth. Let us reflect, dear friends, today if we choose to love and serve here and now for the sake of the kingdom of God. Do we continue to choose mercy, love, grace, peace, reconciliation, justice, compassion, forgiveness here and now every moment? If yes, then the Lord will continue sh showering his mercy, his blessings, his grace upon us already now in preparation, in view of the final happiness at the end of time. And if we do not choose the way of love, of peace, of reconciliation, then it will be like at the time of Noah and Lot, when people were taken by surprise and they died a miserable, sudden death. The choice is in our hands. So, dear friends, let's live for God, for others here and now. Today, in this moment, doing good and being good, and we will be forever grateful and blessed here and now and at the end of time, dear friends. Greetings from Jerusalem, dear friends.